This is what the news around Love Jihad looks like. और करीब आते चुनाव के साथ महाराष्ट्र में लव जिहाद की जनगणना तेजी से होती जा रही है मुंबई आकर जान की बन गई जरीना शेख हाजीपुर में लव जिहाद सीरा जोरी पर उतारू हो गया है मुस्लिम पक्ष दानिश लिव इन लव धोखा एक और लव जिहाद देर इज मोर आगरा में अब लेडी लव जिहाद का मामला सामने आया पूरा एक नेक्सस है इज देयर अ लव जिहाद अलार्म दैट शुड बी रंग एंड मोर दिल्ली के साक्षी हत्याकांड के बाद देश भर से लगातार लव जिहाद के मामले सामने आ रहे हैं लव जिहाद को लेकर पूरे देश में तनाव का माहौल है एंड मोर लव जिहाद ये शब्द तो बहुत छोटा है लेकिन आज इसके दंश से देश के कई परिवार उजड़ चुके हैं लव जिहाद का सच क्या है सिर्फ एक खेल चल रहा है हिंदू ऐसी मुसलमान बनाए जाने का Love Jihad, an Indian conspiracy theory, an Islamophobic crusade, an existential threat to India, the Hindu nationalist myth, a holy war carried out by Muslims, a Hydra-headed monster, a ticking time bomb, or a hate crime. The descriptive words can vary. It depends on how you are seeing it. But wait, how are you seeing it? Is it this? Love Jihad. देश के खिलाफ अंतरराष्ट्रीय साजिश है और दिस द पॉलिटिकल एजेंडा इज टू टारगेट द मुस्लिम माइनॉरिटी फर्दर डिमोनाइज देम एंड क्रिएट अ ब्रिज इज लव जिहाद एन एक्चुअल ऑर्गेनाइज्ड इंटरनेशनल स्ट्रेटजी डेवलप्ड एंड डिप्लॉयड बाय द इंडियन मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी टू ट्रैप हिंदू वुमेन एंड कन्वर्ट देम और इज इट पार्ट ऑफ द हिंदू राइट विंग्स टूलकिट टू डिमोनाइज एंड क्रिमिनलाइज मुस्लिम मेन टू नो द होल स्टोरी इट इज बेस्ट टू स्टेप बैक इन टाइम Let's stop here. Year 2009, January 20. In a shocking incident of moral policing, hoodlums allegedly belonging to the Sri Ram Sena struck in Mangalore on Saturday. This is no longer just a state government, erring state government. This is a national security issue, as I see it. An attack that's of course disgusted the entire nation. This news was widely circulated and broadcast nationwide. Uh, कितना घटना हुआ है उसके दो कारण है एक तो लव जिहाद दूसरा गौ माता का हत्या एंड दिस इज वॉट द चीफ ऑफ श्री राम सेना प्रमोद मुथलिक से जो कार्यकर्ता किए हैं वो अच्छा किए ही इज द सेम पर्सन हु क्लेम्स टू हैव क्वेंट द टर्म लव जिहाद एज अर्ली एज टू थाउजेंड फाइव ही इवन रोट अ बुक ऑन इट In the subsequent years his linguistic invention garnered endorsement from other far right groups the primary one was Hindu Jan Jagriti Samiti active in the Dakshin Kannada district of the coastal Karnataka and parts of northern Kerala and whose track record highlights moral policing campaigns even involving attacks in the garb of campaign against the westernization of Indian culture By 2007 it revamped its campaign with the term love jihad becoming a political currency in their meetings gay ko kaata jayega mandir ko toda jayega love jihad karega to uska kya hal hoga ye prerna lene ki aaj avashyakta hai and the word literally spread and so did the narrative listen to this 2007 speech in azamgarh by current uttar pradesh cm yogi adityanath अगर वह एक हिंदू बालिका को ले जाएंगे तो कम से कम मुस्लिम बालिकाओं को हिंदू एंड ऑल्सो लुक एट दिस ग्राफ इट मैप्स कन्नड़ डिस्ट्रिक्ट which is well known as the laboratory of hindutva in the state to dakshin kannada jille udupi jille hindutva da factory agu untade journalist vikhar ahmed said a recipient of the nashiman award in journalism points out that it was a kannada evening tabloid that introduced the term on september 7 2009 which was picked up by a mainstream newspaper and by early october notable kannad newspapers were throwing the word around why was this narrative garnering this unexpected attention 
the court of a neighboring state might answer. On September 29, 2009, Justice K.T. Shankaran of the Kerala High Court denied anticipatory bail for two Muslim men who were charged with converting and subsequently marrying a Christian and a Hindu girl. And in that ruling, the police was directed to probe into a movement or project which is called Romeo Jihad or Love Jihad conceived by a section of the Muslims. Before the investigation would conclude, the news caught on. On October 5th, Kerala Kaumudi, a Malayalam newspaper, published a front page article headlined Romeo Jihadis Prowl with Love Traps. Ten days later, the EJS issued a press release describing the Muslim youth as sexual wolves who were on the prowl for Hindu women. It even gave numbers to claim the existence of Love Jihad. Roughly three women fell victim to Love Jihad every day in Dakshin Kannar district. More than 30,000 women had been converted to Islam across the state. But these claims were busted soon. The statement filed by the Kerala police found no conclusive evidence about Love Jihad. To each of these eight questions, the answer came in negation. A similar probe ordered by the Karnataka High Court around the same time also dismissed the existence of this imaginary movement. But the drawn conclusions were the opposite. The very act of these judicial investigations gave seriousness to this story. It had amplified the belief in the myth of love jihad and the spectre only gets scarier from here. And then came the season of the great Indian parliamentary elections. Sonia Gandhi, the head of the Congress party, addressed thousands of people. The largest ballot ever organized anywhere to this day. And over 350 parties competing for 543 seats. The big question, as campaign 2014 changed the way, elections will be fought henceforth. <laughs> Campaigns were on. हर हाथ शक्ति हर हाथ तरक्की लोकतंत्र की मांग है हम जाति बिरादरी से ऊपर उठे संप्रदायवाद से ऊपर उठे सबका साथ सबका विकास पोलराइजिंग कैंपेन्स टू बी प्रिसाइज मोहन भागवत टू डिस्कस पोस्ट पोल स्ट्रेटजीज ह्यूज कंट्रोवर्सी ब्रेक्स आउट ओवर वीएचपी लीडर प्रवीण तोगाड़ियाज अलेज्ड एंटी मुस्लिम रिमार्क्स इन गुजरात गिल की पहाड़ियों को फतह करने वाला कोई हिंदू नहीं था the BJP cannot, you know, wish away or wash away a Pramod Muthalik. And they were quite evident in North India's Uttar Pradesh, which is electorally the most important state of the country. Uttar Pradesh mein aur visesh karke Pashchimi Uttar Pradesh mein ye chunaav sanman ka chunaav hai, apman ke badle ka chunaav hai. For this Muzaffarnagar hate speech, BJP President Amit Shah was charged by the police. The speech came in the aftermath of the 2013 Muzaffarnagar violence where the otherwise largely unknown narrative of Love Jihad found its way into northern India, as the frequency of Google searches shows. In Muzaffarnagar, a local incident was paraded as Love Jihad. With inflammatory speeches and misinformation campaigns, the fire was stoked. It cost more than 60 lives and left thousands displaced. Operation Juliet, a long investigation jointly conducted by Cobra Post and Gulel, revealed how the bogey of Love Jihad was used to perpetuate this violence and two BJP leaders confessed to their roles in it. After the Muzaffarnagar violence, media coverage of the Love Jihad campaigns amplified. The Google Trends showcased the attention it had garnered. 
In those elections, BJP won 71 of 80 seats in Uttar Pradesh, its best electoral performance to date, and it secured a majority in the central government too. Aisa prachand nartija aaya hai ki rajniti ko lekar sabhi purani samaj aur PhD filhar niras tiyaa sthagit ho gayi hai. BJP ki is jeet ne rajniti ki nayi kitab haath mein thama diya, jisse shuru se padna hoga. Hindustan ke itihas mein pehli baar gair Congress sarkar itni saaf bahumat se satta mein aa rahi hai. All of this was no surprise. Love Jihad had been a crucial weapon in Hindutva's toolkit, and it just became more prominent following the BJP's success. Remember this 2007 video? This is what Yogi Adityanath had to say about it in August 2014, after the BJP had won. लव जिहाद के नाम पर जो धोखा जो फरेब जिस प्रकार की चीटिंग हो रही है जिस प्रकार से दबावस भयवस और धोखा देकर के हिंदू बालिकाओं का अपहरण हो रहा है प्रशासन कार्रवाई नहीं कर रहा है इसे कतई स्वीकार नहीं किया जाएगा लव जिहाद वॉज जस्ट एवरीवेयर इन बुक्स इन मूवीज एंड बॉलीवुड इन हिस्ट्री इन न्यूज एंड न्यूज इन सॉन्ग्स एंड इन एडवर्टीजमेंट एंड मैगजीन एंड कैंपेन एंड इन वायलेंस Muslim men were loving, luring, forcing, trapping Hindu women all to convert them and increase the number of Muslims. लड़कियों को ये अपने प्रेम जाल में फंसा कर और उन्हीं से शादी कर उनसे ही 10 दस पंद्रह पंद्रह बच्चे पैदा कर वो अपनी जनसंख्या बढ़ाने का कार्य कर रही है। हिंदू बालिकाओं का अफरान होना, उसके साथ जबरन दुष्कर्म करना, उसकी जिंदगी को बर्बाद कर देना। And this was shaping Hindutva's idealized historical narrative. Hindus were historically oppressed victims. They were confronting a perceived threat from this minority group which was challenging their demographic dominance. Basically, the Indian version of the Great Replacement Theory. And what is this new term now? The Great Replacement Theory is an ethno-nationalist conspiracy warning that white populations are being actively replaced by non-white immigrants. And in India, this anxiety around rising Muslim numbers and of them producing a demographic shift runs way back, way beyond 2009 or even 2005. It goes a century before. As we will see ahead, Love Jihad was a recent linguistic creation, but the ideology behind it was not. In 1893, Charles H. Pearson, a British-Australian historian, published a book. He wrote that non-white races like Chinese, Hindus and black people would overtake the white race. And in 1909, Lieutenant Colonel U.N. Mukherjee wrote a series of articles titled A Dying Race. For him, Hindus in India were a dying race. Ironically, he did mention that there was no actual decrease, but he went ahead fanning the apprehension of extinction of Hindus. His viewpoint strongly resonated with the Hindu nationalist leaders who utilized it to stroke fears of Hindu extinction and rallied Hindus for political mobilization. Following this, the Punjab Hindu Sabha was founded, leading further to the Hindu Mahasabha's establishment in 1915. It was Hindu Mahasabha that envisioned India as a Hindu Rashtra, a nation solely belonging to the Hindus, an idea that would become the credo of RSS. Papia Ghosh, a noted historian and professor, writes that in the 1920s, Hindu publicists and politicians saw in the Khilafat movement and the Mapilla revolts the threat of a thoroughly united, well-organized and militant Muslim population against the Hindus. She also writes that the Hindu Mahasabha's Shuddhi movement originated under B.S. Munje's direction, who was also the mentor of RSS founder Hedgawar. Shuddhi, which in English means purification, was a movement popularized by Swami Shraddhanand and Arya Samaj to reconvert Hindus who had been converted to other religions and to readmit the untouchable castes into the Hindu fold. Does Shuddhi sound a bit like Gharwapsi? The Hindu right-wing program to convert members of minority communities to Hinduism. More than 100 members of the 20 families have reconverted to Hinduism after re-announcing different religions. Vishwa Hindu Parishad ke Dharam Prasar Vibhag ke Tattwa Dhan mein, yaha Khurja ki Kalindi Kunj Colony mein, ek Sanatan Dharam mein Gharwapsi ka karakam Vidivad Bhavyata ke saath ayojit kiya gaya hai. It does. 
and it is. It will get more similar since it was the 1920s when the Love Jihad made its entry into Uttar Pradesh. Charu Gupta, a professor of history at the University of Delhi writes, in the 1920s, militant Hindu assertion reached new heights, especially in the context of Shuddhi and Sangathan. She further explores how abductions and conversions of Hindu women by Muslims became one of the main determinants of Hindu identity. This became a common narrative in popular literature. Like in these poems and tracts, in magazines and illustrations, and in the news. The bogey of Love Jihad kept evolving. Professor Kathinka, a professor of modern South Asian studies, has discussed its gradual metamorphosis in one of her articles. The first was the 1920s, as we saw, where the discursive focus was on abductions. Next, around the beginning of the 21st century, the concept expanded to include love and acknowledgement of female agency. This is where the narrative was shifted from abduction to seduction. <laughs> And it was Quenard Elst, an anti-Muslim propagandist, to be among the first authors to introduce this idea. Quenrad has written numerous books in support of Hindu nationalism since the late 1990s. In 1998, his book, The Demographic Siege, was published by a Hindu nationalist publisher, The Voice of India. Its appendix was titled using Kafir women in the service of Muslim demography. It warned against the increase in interfaith courtship. Interestingly, the conspiracy was already shaping as a globalizing trope. Sir, this is not conversion. Sir, it is a threat to our national security, sir. Sir, this is a global agenda. देखिए लव जिहाद इस देश के खिलाफ इस देश की संस्कृति के खिलाफ एक अंतरराष्ट्रीय साजिश है एंड इट बिकेम क्लियर लेटर कमिंग बैक टू कथिंकास पेपर द नेक्स्ट रेटोरिकल स्टेप वाज इंटरप्रेटिंग अलेज्ड रोमांसिंग स्ट्रेटजी एज अ जिहाद अल्लाह सब ठीक कर देगा हां जो तुम प्रॉब्लम बोल रहे हो उसका भी सलूशन है तुम रमीज के साथ शादी कर लो उठाओ शी इज अ हिंदू गर्ल सो सो फैमिली कैसा प्रूफ करेगा मेरा तो तो इस्लाम को बोल लेगा व्हाट इन द इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट शी कोट्स टू बुक्स दैट केम आउट इन 2003 आर वी भसंस इस्लाम अ कांसेप्ट ऑफ पॉलिटिकल वर्ल्ड इनवेजन बाय मुस्लिम्स एंड केवी पलीवाल्स चैलेंजेस बिफोर द हिंदूज एंड दिस इज व्हाट दे सेड सो व्हेन वी कम टू 2005 व्हेन द वर्ड लव जिहाद बिकेम अ थिंग we now know that it was not out of nowhere there was a whole lot going on in the background and that too since too long and it all started from a demographic myth is this myth still a myth is exploding exploding this is a population bomb muslim abadi jo hai thodi bade zyada bade lekin badhti chali बॉर्डर पर मुस्लिम आबादी इतनी तेजी से बढ़ी है जिसे जनसंख्या जिहाद एक बार की वो कौन सी आबादी है जिसके कारण सबसे ज्यादा और आर मुस्लिम गोइंग टू रिप्लेस हिंदू टू द स्टेटस ऑफ रिलीजियस माइनॉरिटी इन इंडिया नो दे वोट एंड दैट्स द डेटा स्पीकिंग एज पर द रिसेंट सेंसस द मुस्लिम पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ हिट अ ट्वेंटी ईयर लो इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन यस लुक क्लोजली एंड टू The latest data from the National Family Health Surveys has shown that fertility rates have decreased across all communities which obviously includes Muslims. As the NFHS data shows, the TFR among Muslims have recorded the sharpest decline among all religious communities in India. And this video busts all these four popular population claims in detail. So what else is intrinsically wrong with this conspiracy? One, it is rooted in patriarchy. It exercises control over the sexuality and mobility of Hindu women, curtails their freedom, ignores their agency, and reinforces Hindutva masculinity. Two, it reflects the deeper anxieties of Hindutva politics against Muslims. It reproduces the orientalist portrayals of Muslim men as hypersexual and barbaric, and solidifies their perception as of other. a threat to the nation 
हमारे एक्स चीफ मिनिस्टर ने बोला है कि अगले 20 साल में केरला इस्लामिक स्टेट बन जाएगा एंड विद द इंडियन लेजिस्लेटर्स जंपिंग ऑन द बैंड वैगन especially since 2020 it is the muslim community which faces the risk of criminalization how let's see on march 4th 2021 the uttar pradesh legislature passed the prohibition of unlawful conversion of religion act this law comes under the category of state level legislations often otherwise titled as freedom of religion acts which are enacted to regulate religious conversions and there is already a whole set of arguments out there which criticize them for doing exactly the opposite of what they suggest to do USCIRF the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom has noted that the laws use broad and vague language that can be used to target voluntary religious conversions its most recent issue update examined such laws promulgated in 12 states and it observed that these laws had three common features one prohibitions on conversions two notifying the governments and three presuming that the accused is guilty and these anti conversion laws are not some entirely new piece of legislation their history date backs to the colonial era where over a dozen princely states implemented them as early as the 1930s After the failed attempts to enact a center-level anti-conversion law, Odisha became the first state to enact one. The first series of these laws were enacted during the late 1960s and early 1970s in states that had significant tribal populations. As per the Law Library of Congress, their target shifted largely to Muslims in the 1980s, while Christianity received more attention since the 1990s. and the newer entrants to this trend have explicitly aimed them against interfaith marriages by adding a clause against conversion by marriage before it appears to be an equally applicable to all law which would also be problematic the ministers of these states themselves claimed to bring laws against love jihad and look what the critics of these laws say it largely targets muslims Human Rights Watch puts it clearly while this law ostensibly applies to all forced religious conversions enforcement has largely targeted muslim men in hindu muslim relationships despite the myth of love jihad being busted time and again and again and again new anti conversion laws have kept popping up in this quagmire various fundamental rights are being compromised one thing is certain that these laws when challenged cannot pass the test uh, of constitutional validity because these i mean it is a clear violation of uh, the fundamental right under article 21 there are petitions in the supreme court challenging the constitutional validity of these anti conversion laws this petition filed by the citizens for justice and peace argues that these laws violate right to personal liberty and autonomy choice privacy and conscience and the right against discrimination previously in the case of shafeen jahan versus ashokan km publicly often referred to as the hadia case yes this is where the google search for love jihad peaked again the supreme court affirmed the validity of hadia's marriage court held that the right to marry a person of one's choice is integral to article 21 and that matters of belief and faith are at the core of constitutional liberty several high courts have also pushed back against these legislations it is with this silver lining that decisions are being awaited in this quagmire where legislators and politicians are strategizing to spread a conspiracy theory